Hello YouTube. Today I'm going to show you uh, this mount that I made. Uh, this is a foam mount and uh, it's just it's just a piece of oak with a groove in it. Um, now this is my first one that I did and I got a, a little couple like I uh, put angles on them. Um, but you can put your mount in here and then your, your phone will stand up. I, I did something very similar to this in one of the RV projects where, you know, when we're driving and we're using the GPS, the phones will just stand like this. Of course, I could have bought um, something retail um, and I looked around to find something I liked and I just really didn't like anything. So uh, what I decided to do was just design my own. Um, and then I got a latching mechanism too and I will show you that as well. Anyway, all of the ones that I have right now, including the, the camera that, uh, this camera here is a phone as well. And uh, these wood, these mounts are all wood. Oh, that's one of the problems with this mount. And I'll show you how I get around that. Um, in this case, I'm gonna use a piece of acrylic. Um, and uh, we're gonna put a groove in here um, and show you the dimensions and we'll make a mount and I'll show you how we fix it from falling out. Uh, we'll move over to the mill here and I'll show you uh, the milling operations. We're going to go ahead and mill out a portion of this and I'll give you the dimensions. Okay, here's the two of the dimensions that we're going to use. Um, this will be the, uh, let me go get the example here. Um, this lip here, this front lip is going to be uh, 0.375 or 3 eighths of an inch and the gap uh, is going to be the same. Uh, this one's a little bit wider um, and it I mean you can uh, adjust these specifications to your phone um, there's a lot of wiggle room here um, if you get it too wide though it'll fall down uh, so you trial and error it so the dimensions I'm going to use is the front lip is going to be 3 8 and then the gap is going to be 3 8 so I'm going to go ahead and set my calipers to uh, 375 roughly around about there and then go ahead and scribe a mark on top of the acrylic here. I can barely even see that. There we go. Oh. Well, uh, good thing we're going to polish this thing. Get all the scratches out of it. There we go. Here's my first mark. Not that great. And then now I'll set my calendar calipers. Uh, if you add uh, 375 and 375 together, you get 0.75. So I'll move this to 0.75, roughly. And it seems to be scoring better like this. So what I will do is go ahead and get uh, the 3 8 bit mounted in the milling machine there. Uh, and uh, we'll start uh, taking some of this material out and I'll give you the depth here. Oh, sorry. <laughs> start taking some material out and I'll give you the depth. Okay, uh, I decided to give you the dimensions of the block. Um, and this is just, you know, a piece of scrap. So uh, it happens to be four inches wide from here to here and this section here is 2.4. Um, again, the, I, I'm just using what I had um, around, you know, any size would work. I'm also going to use a 3 8 inch depth. So, oh, the, tall, the, the thickness of, of this block is 0.678 and there's a bevel on the top edge, kind of a pretty little bevel there. And uh, again, I didn't put that there, that was just what I had. Um, now, what we'll be doing is we'll be going to a 3 8 inch depth in this piece of plastic. And so if it's six and if it's six seven eight and we subtract 3 8 of an inch, uh, the resultant is uh, 0.303. So I'm going to set my calipers to 0.303. Make sure they're zeroed out. 304. 305 is good enough. And I'm going to go ahead and describe a line where I will uh, stop the cut. Again, I forgot how I'm doing this. This is scribing better. And I'll go ahead and put one on this side too. And if you're wondering why I'm going from the bottom, it is because of this bevel here. It wouldn't allow me to scribe. And I'm sorry, uh, doing this by myself, so I'm half out of frame. Sorry about that. 
Uh, anyway, so we'll go ahead and mount this and you'll see that uh, I have a 3 8 bit already in the uh, milling machine. Um, I'm sure you purists has got a problem with this. I've got uh, my 3 8 bit and my chuck. I'm not doing metal. Um, this is just plastic and I'll go slow and it'll work. Of course I do have the collets but just didn't feel like getting them out. So <laughs> anyway, we'll go ahead and block this up and align, align it and, uh, and then we'll start the cutting operations here. So I have a bit lined up. Again, high precision is not necessary here, but I'm just looking to this, I'm looking at this side and I'm just kind of seeing this edge of the bit on this line and this edge of the bit on this line. Um, and so uh, I'll use the power feed and I'll do a, a couple sweeps um, to get it down to the depth mark that uh, I can see on the side of the block here. Um, there we go. I, would, I don't know what correct for um, plastic, but I'm going to start at about 1700 RPMs. And we'll just take a light pass to see what happens. So on my power feed, what I'm noticing is, is that it's not jamming up, but it doesn't really have a, uh, you know, unless you got it incredibly sloppy, it doesn't drive. I, I believe this is a Grizzly driver. I found the manual for it, um, and there's some potentiometers in there, and uh, apparently one's torque, but the uh, instructions don't tell you. And then I look for a replacement board as well, and... Um, trying to find a replacement board and find the instructions. If anybody knows on these uh, on these drive units here how to change the torque, it's not, you know, it's not, the table's not so tight. I just, I know it's gotta be out of adjustment. The table's really loose. In fact, if you pay attention, you can actually see it. Um, go left and right. Okay, so the next operation we're going to do is I'm going to put a bevel on the back. And I'm not going to measure it, but it's probably somewhere between uh, 10 and 20 degrees. And then you can, uh, you can do whatever degree you like. Um, I just want a little relief so it sits back just a little bit. On all the previous ones, I didn't use the uh, milling machine. I used the, uh, the tail saw. And I think I set it to 20 degrees is what I did. We'll take this up now and pull this out. Yeah, we'll set our phone in there. And so it still has this issue where it wants to flop forward. 
but I will show you how we're going to deal with that. All right, I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate. Um, this is the wood one, the wood one that I have. You can see the angle there um, and uh, you know, how it compares to this. This one is a little smaller, but I think it's going to work really well. So the first system I came up with was this little strap here. Um, and you, you know you can put it on either side and uh, I have a little bit larger phone than this but uh, and so it's sloppy but you know I would tighten the strap up and uh, you know make it a little tighter depending on but I want to try to see if I can come up with a little bit better way to do this um, and so I'm gonna try a couple different things and uh, show you the things that I'm trying um, to go ahead and get this to be what I want it to be Okay, so I've been doing some thinking about this and um, um, trying to think, I was, you know, trying to think, you know, like I had a steel rod or, you know, or a piece of brass or something um, to go here. And then I really haven't thought that out, maybe a piece of plastic or something, a way to put some weight on it would keep it up. Um, and then I was kind of thinking, do I go with threaded or non-threaded? Um, and um, I think threaded's the way to go. That way, you know, uh, if I need to provide tension, all I need to do is uh, just put, um, um, you know, just put put a bolt on here. Um, so I think that's what I'm going to go with. And I don't like the center because uh, the, if I'm going to turn this into a tripod mount, kind of like this one, uh, I want that to be uh, nearly in the center. So I'm going to go offset to the side. I'm going to drill the hole out here, and then I'll. I'll uh, drill it out larger on the bottom uh, to, to um, uh, take the uh, um, the carriage bolt here. Um, I'm using a carriage bolt because they're typically threaded all the way down. Um, I have different lengths of uh, stainless. Uh, these are uh, quarter 20s, uh, uh, but uh, I wanted to thread it all the way down. Maybe I don't need it, I don't know. But if I go ahead and uh, uh, drill this out and I can thread it, and then open up a gap a little bit so it will sink flush in there. And that's what I'm going to do now. Uh, tap this uh, whole um, quarter 20 tap, um, unless I decide to change the bolt out, but immediately I'm just going to tap this. So to tap it, I'm using my cheat sheet up there, and it says I need a 13 64 bit, which I have here. And I'm just going to do this by hand, and I'll just come straight through. I'm going to go ahead and get my tap now. Got the quarter 20 tap here. It's plastic, so I'll just take it slow here. And this will just keep it from falling out of the bottom. And that seems to be working pretty good. Uh, so now I need to uh, make a consideration for uh, the head here uh, so it's flush on the bottom. I'll take this in a couple steps here. Uh, I'm going to try. Uh, 11.30 seconds to start. And up to the half inch. And I'll probably just get it going. Because, boy likes to chip. I'm going to use a bit that I had luck with last time drilling into the plastic. This is the step bit that I have. Uh, you can get these at uh, Harbor Freight or you can pay more money for it. I don't think this is a Harbor Freight one, um, but uh, they're pretty nice to have. You don't got a whole lot of thickness though on each one.
And keep going. Well, I'm taking most of my threads out now, but actually I don't think I'm going to go any further. What I'm going to do is uh, take the head of this, put it on a grinder and make it a little smaller so I still have material to thread in, um, about half right now. So I'm just going to take this down on the grinder and I'll be back. So I took it down on the grinder, now I have enough room uh, to uh, get that head all the way in there. And I'm just going to go through it one more time with the tap. go and we'll go ahead and thread this in here Okay, and it didn't sink the way that I hoped, uh, and I don't know if that's the uh, bottom of that, but I'm going to little pyre pliers and see if I can get that to sink up. And yes, I'm putting pliers directly on the threads. Okay, now I've got that flush. You can see that it doesn't come out and it's pretty solid. Okay, so now back to the design. Now the thought is to come up with something to, you know, tighten this down, give it a little tension so it will be solid. That's, and I don't have it, I know it's going to be something and then probably a screw or something, but I don't know what I'm going to use just yet. And then I don't know if I'll spring load it or exactly how this will work, but, uh, Try to get it easy so you can just clip it, pull the phone out, come here, put the phone back in, and clip it back in. Um, and if I could do it one-handed, that would be amazing. Um, instead of having to, you know, fiddle with it with two hands, if I could just take one hand and take it and drop it and clip it in, that would be great. And then if I get a different size phone later, you know, I could adjust it for whatever size phone I got. Anyway, that's kind of the ideal. I'll work on that, and I'll be uh, back with you. So, uh, anyways, here's what I've came up with, guys. Um, and got the rod and I've got this little brass piece here and I got it wedged between these two t two pieces here and then what you can do is just take your phone set it here Oop, all right there you go and it's in there and uh, I mean I have to hold the base like this uh, but if it was affixed to anything I could I could set that there with one hand um, and until I come up with something better, I think that's what I'm going to go with. As you can see, the phone's in there. Pretty solid. It's not going to fall off. This will work for my tripod. It's better than its spring clip, which takes two hands. Um, like I said, you can do this with one hand, you know, assuming your base is pretty solid. Uh, it would take two hands if your base is not solid. But um, that's that's pretty neat design. Uh, remember, guys, this is patent pending, uh, so don't... Uh, uh, try to copy my design by any means. Um, so, anyway, <laughs> anyway, I think this is a pretty slick design myself, you know, and this could be adapted for a car, you know, uh, a tripod is the way I use it. Um, you know, if you don't have to worry about the stability and you want to go with a bigger base, you wouldn't even need this, you know, you could just set it there, uh, whatever, by your nightstand or stuff. Um, that way you can look up and see it if you wanted to. Um, but anyway, this is going to suit my needs really well, and I'm really happy with the results. So uh, um, I'm going to um, sand and polish these edges here so you can see all the way through them. Um, and uh, I'll give you a, a final picture when it's all done. Um, you know what, maybe in case you guys haven't done it, uh, maybe what I'll do is I'll go ahead and include in this video how to clean this up and make it look transparent. And uh, this is, you know, this is just a quick down and dirty job that I have done. But you can see this was a piece of acrylic 
that um, these are the sawed edges and um, right here here and uh, you can polish those up um, sand them fine sandpaper um, and then I even got the ends done here a little bit they're not real perfect but um, uh, you can sand these and you can make them you can see you can see clearly through that I mean this is the factory edges here and uh, these are the edges that I cleaned up so why don't I show you guys how to do that and then I'll close this video out I think that's a 120 grit right there on the uh, hand sander. And then I'll go with uh, just do some hand sanding with like two or 300. What I got here is some 320. And if you can kind of start to see here, um, do this side here. How much luck I'll have cleaning out this channel um, with the buffer. I mean, maybe if I had a real smooth one. All right, down and dirty, huh? Okay, we'll get the buffer out. And I got I got three buffer pads tied together, and I'll be using the red rouge. Kind of before. And you can kind of see that it's uh, clearing up quite a bit right there. If you hold it on there too long, you'll burn it. All right, so this will be uh, all of the video. You know, I have a Dremel and a little buffer and I might be able to go in that groove and clean that up and make it clear. And I didn't do a great job on the bottom. But anyway, there's my uh, stand, my telephone stand uh, for either doing videos or I have one of these in my vehicle. I think I'm gonna mention, I don't know. Uh, so it doesn't just come flopping out on the floor on me. And it's adjustable where it will work with many sizes and types, um, types and styles of phones. So anyway guys, thank you very, very much for watching. Uh, my goal with the videos are that I just decided um, is to inspire you. You know, go out in the garage and do something. Um, you know, everything that I do is not perfect. It's all got little flaws here and there. But uh, you can actually make some pretty cool stuff um, if you put your mind to it. Thank you again. Thank you again for watching. If you like this video, uh, please subscribe to my channel.